Bell, to answer this question too. The Office of the First Minister and Deputy First Minister has had no discussions with the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment on bringing forward a cross-departmental policy on the exploitation of shale gas. Deputy officials are continuing to liaise with the Department of the Environment officials as part of the work of the Shale Gas Regulators Forum. In addition, Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment officials, in conjunction with Department of Environment Planning and Northern Ireland Environment Agency officials, provided the Northern Ireland input to the onshore oil and gas exploration in the United Kingdom regulation and best practice roadmap, which was published by the Department for Energy and Climate Change on the 17th of December 2013. Thank you, and Mr. Wilson for supplementary. I'm disappointed that given the energy problems which we face in Northern Ireland, that this issue hasn't been addressed in a cross-departmental way. But given the fact that at least two executive ministers have vociferously opposed uh, the exploitation of shale gas in Northern Ireland, something which the 42% of consumers who experience fuel poverty and businesses which are struggling with fuel bills will find bewildering. Can he give an assurance that there will be a serious discussion on energy policy, investment policy, planning policy, environmental policy and mineral exploitation policy to ensure that we do not lose out on the opportunity which has transformed the American economy and has got the potential to transfer the North, or transform the Northern Ireland economy. Well, I, I think when two departments are, are, are working together, that is cross-departmental. But it's important that we always follow the evidence and the best practice that there is. Um, I think we've all got a responsibility to be good stewards of the environment, to be good stewards of the earth. And we also have a responsibility to look at international best practice, as the member so rightly points out, at where there can be success, where there can be success in terms of uh, energy security, where there can be success in terms of jobs created, where there can be success in terms of businesses that have their energy costs driven down and therefore can appear more competitive on the international uh, market. It will ultimately be a matter for the Northern Ireland Executive. And I think the Northern Ireland Executive will be judicious as they look at this matter. It will be important to take account of all of the implications that are, are there if we proceed and the implications that are equally there if we do not proceed uh, with exploiting what is a natural resource. Uh, I think uh, the member made a number of important points towards the end of his question that should undoubtedly be part of those considerations. Um, we should be aware of the best practice in the United States of America. We should be aware and look towards where there is best practice in the rest uh, of our United Kingdom. And we have to judiciously weigh the evidence in a measured way that allows us to be good stewards of the earth that we have inherited and what we want to pass on environmentally to our children and grandchildren, but also that we don't miss out on the huge opportunities that are available to deliver jobs and investment to the people that we serve. Thank you. And I call Mr Phil Flanagan. I got the, a free last count, and I thank the, the junior minister for his answers. Um, but given the, the questions from the, the previous member, will the junior minister give us his assessment as to whether he believes climate change exists or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know... Uh, I have a degree in science, but it's in psychology, and some would even debate whether that is actually a science or a social science. I think what we have got to do, uh, in all seriousness, uh, is take a look at what there is, to take a look at the best scientific evidence available, to take a look at where there is shale gas exploration on other parts of the world, because we all live in an international uh, marketplace. Uh, jobs, the cost of jobs, the cost of energy will affect what we can provide in terms of employment for our young people uh, and for our own citizens. There's obvious concerns that exist uh, within climate change. And we all have a responsibility to ensure that the environment that we pass on, that we do it responsibly. And we've equally got to take a balanced approach 
between looking at where there has been international best practice in the area, to look at the international science, to see where difficulties exist, but equally to see where opportunities exist. And if opportunities are existing to significantly drive down energy costs and thereby allow our people to have more jobs, to have more investment in their area and more money coming into the economy, then we'd be foolish to ignore that on, on an emotional basis. We have to look at it in a measured way, to look at it scientifically and see what we can do for the next generation that are coming after us. We have examples. We can look to the rest of the United Kingdom. We can look to the United States. And where there is best practice and where there is success, we'd be very foolish not to copy that in terms of the United States, in terms of driving down of energy costs. We know the European Union is looking towards energy security as one of its primary aims into the future. And we do well not to ignore those concerns. And I call. Uh I call Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, thank the junior minister so far. Uh, could the minister confirm if there has been any agreements or even discussions uh, about the specific benefits to local communities, such as rate reductions uh, to the local communities where fracking would take place? Well, I mean, where we are in terms of the current position, uh, the preparation for that possible unconventional oil and gas development in Northern Ireland and its regulation. As it stands at the minute, it requires input from several government departments and from several other bodies. Now, the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment has the initial role in terms of the, license, the licensing and the regulation of petroleum exploration. The Department of the Environment would be the principal regulator for shale gas development through its environmental and its planning uh, responsibilities, and then the Department of Finance and Personnel, if it's a direct question uh, in relation to rates, would be the best department uh, to answer your specific question. The Shield Gas Regulators Forum was established in 2012. It was a joint initiative by the Enterprise Trade and Investment Minister and the then DOE Minister, Alex Atwood, MLA. Now, it continues to keep the legislative and the regulatory requirements that are needed to support possible development under review. And where it's possible, it will coordinate the functions and facilitate uh, the cooperation. Um, but there has been no direct discussion as yet between the Minister of the Environment and the Minister of Dedi on the development of shale gas in Northern Ireland. However, the Dedi officials are continuing to liaise with the Department of the Environment officials uh, as part of that work that lies within the shale gas uh, regulation, regulators forum. And DETI officials in conjunction with DOE planning and the Northern Ireland Environment Agency officials uh, are going to provide the Northern Ireland input to the onshore oil and gas exploration in the United Kingdom, the regulation and the best practice roadmap. Thank you. And I call Mr Stephen Agnew. Speaker, and I welcome the junior minister's statement that uh, we should be looking at the evidence, because all the evidence is that exploiting shale gas in Northern Ireland won't bring down gas prices. But uh, where I would agree with where I would agree with Mr. Wilson um, is that this is a deep, deep cross-departmental issue. And does the junior minister agree then that it, it's a bit analogous that um, we have this situation where the de deputy minister can issue a license without any consultation? Oh, I mean, I can't uh, agree uh, with the member, and I think anybody looking at this situation dispassionately and objectively could not concur in a reasonable way that all of the evidence is against, because it quite clearly isn't. And I'm not sure that sort of zero-sum game that he proposes is in the best interests of the environment or in the best interests of energy security are the best interests of fuel poverty, are in the best interests of job creation. And I think the tenor of the member's question uh, would indicate exactly why we do need to have independent and objective evidence. There, I mean, any progress scientifically that has been made has always been met with fears. And I don't dismiss the fears, but they have to be forensically analysed. 
uh, there is best practice in other parts of the world, we have to look at what actually occurs there. We are facing a situation in Europe of energy security. We are also facing a situation right across the board where all of us in this House want to pass on best practice in the environment and to use best practice in making our decisions. So as I say, what is necessary is a measured judicious response that dispassionately analyzes the evidence for science and compares it against, one, how can we pass on, as a good steward of the earth, a better environment and use best practice from what we inherited? And also, how can we ensure that we follow international best practice, including international best practice that allows us to create jobs, to make energy uh, prices cheaper, that allows us to bring investment into our, our areas and allows us to make our businesses competitive on the international stage that they have to perform on. Order, and that ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions and I call Mr Oliver McMullen.